Let me put uh, one here. I want to do two more methods. Uh, it, happened that, it happens that both of them are accessors. We'll see more complicated mutators as we, uh, when we develop another class later. The first one, I want to have public double get price. The intention is I want to show you how it can have some computation inside rather than as easy as just return the attribute value, right? So what's the what's the intention for this method? Easy. Let me go back to our uh, website for the refer, uh, refurbished shop quickly. Let's say for this particular product, we have set already the original price to be 1759 and this is a discount value. And what would be the price? As I said before, it can be derived simply original price minus the discount value. So that'll be the computation we have to do whenever we call this method. Okay, that's basically what I want. And I want for those of you who may uh, who still may not feel very comfortable about implementing method, I want to give you some idea about pattern. Okay, so you can think about there are three sections for your uh, accessors, and mutator will be in a way that's similar. For accessor, you want to say local variable decorations. You can declare as many local variables as you like. For example, in this case, I want to declare double price. Eventually, I want to return this price. And for every local variable you declare, just give them the default value to begin with. You don't need to assign anything meaningful just yet. And then this, uh, the middle section will be computation. By the way, if you find the earlier console output annoying over here, what you can do is right click on the console and say clear. Okay, that's what you can do. Let me maximize the uh, tab over here. The middle section, I'll worry about that later. And the final section will be to return the value. And typically the computational result will be stored in one of the uh, variable that you declare locally. So here I can simply say return the price. So I think for beginners, this would be what I advise you to actually follow the pattern. But if you av advance enough, just do it your own way. That's fine. And for computation, what should we do? Well, in this case, we're going to assign some value to the price so that we can return something meaningful. We want to say we want to subtract the discount value, the attribute from the original price, right? That's what we want to do. So what we can do is we can say price is assigned to this dot original price minus this dot discount value. Again, here's my question. Is this dot over here necessary? If yes, why? If not, why not? Answer, they are not necessary for this dot, meaning that you can simply do this dot over here, you can get rid of it, you can get rid of it, and then if you move your mouse over each one of them, you can see that it's still referring to the original price right up here. That's declared for, for the attribute at line number 16. And the reason that it's unnecessary is because there's no variable shadowing. And variable shadowing happen if there's any parameter variable in the method that clashes with uh, the variable name, uh, with the attribute name. But in this case, we don't. So that's, that means we are fine, all right? And also variable shadowing can happen if you actually happen to have the same local variable name as the attribute, but I don't think it can do that, right? Let me try, for example. Can I simply declare a variable like this? It turns out I can, uh, oh, it turns out I can. Okay, so that's another occasion for variable shadowing. So variable shadowing, variable shadowing occurs either when the parameters for the methods or the local variables you declare clash with any of the attribute names that you have declared over here, right? That's variable shadowing. So in this case, you want to be careful because now when you say original price over here, it really is it's really referring to the local variable over here rather than the attributes over here. So to disambiguate, you gotta say this, the original price, right? So you can definitely play with uh, the tool to see how uh, uh, whether the this dot should be necessary or not. But I would suggest you don't want to be too uh, dependent on the tool. You should really make a judgment before the tool tells you whenever possible. Let me just delete this. Okay, but you see the idea. Okay, so I'll just say this dot. All right, so this is our first method. I want to do another method. Another method is kind of inspired by the fact that 
whenever I try to print out P, P2, and P3, I would say it's very rare that you, when you do develop, uh, develop an application that a user is actually interested in what the memory address uh, are for individual objects. I don't think the user will really care. So it would be much more convenient whenever we say we want to print out P, we want to print out P2, we want to print out P3. Rather than printing out the memory addresses like before, we want to print out maybe a, uh, like a description of the objects and we want to be able to customize that description. So this is the method I want to show to you. This might be something you didn't learn uh, in the first year. At least you didn't learn from me in 1022, I can tell you, in the winter. Okay, so let's now, uh, uh, the method I want to introduce is called the to string method, okay? Public, you gotta spell it verbatim, okay? Public string to string over here, right? It's gonna return a string and let's follow the pattern I talked about, declare some local variable. So let's say string, let's say S, in the beginning, just some default value. You can make it null, or you can make it empty string. But uh, since I want to do concatenation, so I better initialize that to be empty string. And eventually, I want to return s as the return value, right? So now in the middle, I'm going to put something meaningful, okay? To save your time, I'm going to cheat by copy and pasting a line from my notes, okay? But I'm going to explain to you, don't worry. I wouldn't just uh, leave you alone with that. So what I would do is I'm going to say this line over here is my definition, right? It's a little bit long, but I can uh, uh, try to make it shorter uh, by splitting that into multiple lines. But I would say s plus equal, okay? Plus equal simply means s is assigned to s plus, right? That's what you learned from the first year. So in case you got trouble with that, let me know. So I'm trying to concatenate uh, the strings for different parts for the attributes. You can definitely type it uh, now. Okay, I'm gonna say model concatenated with an empty string concatenated by the finish and also uh, empty uh, empty space and also storage and etc. Right? Let me just uh, split it into here. Okay, plus cellular connectivity and don't forget the space over here because later we're gonna develop JUnit test cases, so it's gonna be verbatim. Okay, and also plus and this boolean variable which will be either true or false, and then we want to close some around parenthesis and then we'll say plus and this is important for original price and also discount value we want to display exactly two decimal digits after the the points right in that case this is uh the format you can use string class dot formats in that case you will need to put uh, the first argument here in the quote so dollar sign and dot that's the decimal point i wanted to two floating point digits after that. That's what it means, okay? And for this, you don't need to memorize it. Whenever you want to use it, just uh, copy and paste. That'll be okay, right? So that means original price, which is a double value. I'm going to display it as a string with exactly two digits after the decimal point. So that's what it means, right? Don't forget a dot and the dollar sign, okay? And similarly, we're going to say uh, discount value as well. Okay, in case you haven't finished typing yet, I would suggest pause the video right now and then copy this particular definition over here verbatim. So for me to test it, let me just use a console application to give you some idea. And then we'll see the JUnit test cases uh, later. Let me go to product app over here. Okay, and we got P, P2 and P3, right? Remember earlier in the earlier video, if I hit the launch bu uh, button here over here, what we're going to see from P1, P2, uh, P, P2, and P3, you know, for the sake of uh, illustration, let me forget about P3 just for now. Okay, let's not execute it. Let me just uh, select it, control forward slash, or command forward slash. Earlier, we will see the printouts of the two addresses, right? But now, as soon as I declare the to string method over here in that product class, implicitly, let me just write it down for you, implicitly. Implicitly, system.out.println is going to invoke p.2 string, implicitly. You don't need to write it down, it will just be done automatically for you. And similarly, implicitly, this will be p2 dot to string. Okay, let's see. If I now launch the console apps, right? This is something you will see. At least you can see that these two lines, there's uh this this is uh uh p dot string, 
and this line here is p2.toString. Apparently, they are not addresses anymore. But what if you want to print out addresses? Let me just show it to you. Well, if I just do an easy manipulation here, I can simply select this for a command forward slash. It's gone. And now if I launch the console application again, I get back to the addresses, right? So you can see the to string method, I would say it's very rare that you will need to uh, print the addresses of objects into the console. You can just use the equal equal sign as I showed to you in the earlier video to compare addresses. You don't need to know the exact values for the address. All right, let me go back to the products over here and then I'm gonna uncomment that. Com uh, select the block, command, forward slash, okay? Let me verify and say this. You might be wondering, why do we have null and null over here? It is because in this P over here, it was created using the default constructor. So every attribute is of default value. So in that case, for example, you can see in the first line, this will be the model, which is uh, a string. So by default, it will be null. This will be the finish, but, uh, which is also string. By default, it will be null. This will be the storage, and this will be the Boolean. And this, uh, these will be the two double. Uh, variable. They are all by default. On the other hand, for P2 over here, we have initialized only the model and the original price. So that's why you can see the model over here has been replaced by iPad, uh, iPad Pro 12.9. And also original price over here has been replaced by this value over here. Right? All the others remain to be the default values, right? which is completely expected. All right. Okay, so that's about what I want to show you for this uh, this to string method. It's really important for you to remember whenever you call system the other print line implicitly, you, uh, Java will actually call p uh, whatever object it is, like uh, for example p dot to string. So if you really want to print out some meaningful uh, description, you can simply define a to string method in the relevant class. Right? I want to show you two more things before I, uh, I let you go for the current video. So there are two alternative ways for implementing this method. This will definitely work uh, by using string concatenation. And not, uh, another two approaches I want to show to you, one is called using a string builder class. Uh, it's a library class. You can look up the API if you wish, but I'll show you how you can do it. You can say string builder, okay? And type it and control space. And we can, imp uh, we can import the string builder from Java the language, okay? And then I can say string builder will be the new string builder. And I can simply call the default constructor, which will give me an empty string. And if I want to uh, concatenate any string value to it, all I gotta do is to say uh, string builder dot append. And then I can append uh, any value I like. For example, I can append model. Let me just go for the extreme. Let's say I want to append this particular string value over here. Okay, of course you can split that into multiple uh, appends if you wish, but let me just do this way, okay? So I just need to put a semicolon at the end. Okay, it will just work. It will still work for sure. Let me just uh, comment this out. This is a concatenation version. This is string builder version. I go back to product app. And if I try, oh, sorry, I forgot one thing. Of course, nothing here, because in that case, I would need to say, I only got a string builder over here, so I need to say my the return value will be based on string s. So I'm gonna say s is reassigned to string builder dot to string. So the to string method now it will make sense. To string is a very uh, basic method that you might just find in every library class in Java. So whenever you want to get a string representation of a particular library objects, you can just say to string. In this case, I'll say string builder dot to string. That's going to give me the string value. Okay. Let me go back here, and then if I say launch, right, I'm I'm still getting this description over here. So it's also working. So that's a second version that will also work. Let me give you the third version, which is slightly more advanced, but I think uh, since this is advanced OOP course, I think you deserve some challenge, okay? Let me comment this out, okay? Again, um, to save your time, I'm also, I'm gonna cheat again, okay? By uh, copy and pasting a line from my notes, but I'll explain that to you, okay? This is the line. Hey, let me maximize the tab over here and then I'll show you how to type it. This is how you can uh, understand it. 
you're gonna say string the formats, right? And then open in parentheses, and the first argument for that is going to be this long string. Oh, oh uh, you can pause the video later to, to see. This will be the first argument. And the rest of the argument is going to be over here, okay? Okay, let me just try to uh, do it this way, okay? This one should be good enough, okay? Whenever you think uh, the, uh, the two string output that you want to have, for example here, is of this, oh, sorry, let me just uh, double click and go back to the console. So this is like a string. And the pattern of that is, I want to get a value for the attribute here, followed by some space, and get a value here, followed by some space, get an attribute value over here, followed by the string GB and etc. right? You can definitely definitely specify in a more convenient way using string that formats. That's what I'm doing here, right? I'm basically saying this string over here, right? So here I'm saying, uh, whenever this dollar uh, s is going to be replaced by some string expression, dollar s corresponds to this uh, model over here, and dollar s uh, s stands for string is corresponding to this uh, finish, which is another string, and followed by a space, and now we're going to have dollar uh, d for decimal number, like an integer. So this will be corresponding to this uh, storage, right? Which just goes, which just go by the order of the sequence, and then followed by gb space literally and followed by this particular string until here after that we want to have another string and this string will be replaced by uh dollar s which will be uh the boolean so whenever you want to print out the boolean you can say uh dollar s as well you want to get a string value for the boolean and then we're going to get string until over here right and now this will be the interesting bit right dollar dot to f which we have seen already, right? That's how we do the string formats for the first version. And now we are saying that followed by dollar sign and opening parentheses, we want to have some floating point number with exactly two digits after the decimal point. And this expression here will be replaced by this the original price. So you can think about this combined with this is equivalent to this. Okay, I'll let you think about it, okay? And then uh, after that, we're gonna have a space minus sign. And then finally, the last one is to be formatted will be the just another double, uh, another floating point number with two decimal uh, with two digits after the decimal point. And this will be replaced by this dot discount value, right? So I would say this third version is very handy. Uh, if you still find, find it confusing, you can ask me during the Q and A or uh, come to me in person and I can uh, show you maybe more example, but that's uh, another version for you. So we got three versions for the two string method. You uh, using either one is perfectly fine. But for me, uh, let me stick to the most basic one, which is by using the concatenation operator. Okay, let me just use that, right? And let me go back here and make sure everything is still run. Let me launch the console app. Okay, it's still running. All right, so that's about the, uh, uh, we spoke about how you can generate accessors and mutators, the basic one, automatically using uh, Eclipse. And also we sp uh, spoke about some customized accessors like a uh, get price. We haven't talked about how to trace it, but we'll, I will speak about it later. And also we talk about this very useful to string method. If you want to print out the uh, meaningful description for some objects rather than its address. But in this case, you can either say P or P dot to string. They're equivalent to each other. Okay, so in the next video, we will try to develop some uh, unit, uh, J unit test cases.